I remember when I was in university, uh, the head of our course, he was a divisive man. Wasn't everybody's favorite, but he sat me down once. And I hadn't really spoken to him much before, even though this was my third year in, the, in a very small course. And he sat me down and he said, Mark, you know, photography isn't for everybody. And then just kind of smiled at me and kind of nodded. And, you know, it was a strange one. I think in, any, in many ways, though, it was kind of, it spurred me on to prove him wrong, I think. You know, he was trying to kind of say, yeah, maybe, you know, accountancy might be for you or something, you know, but uh, yeah. I think for young photographers starting out, I think the best piece of advice is to take other people's advice with a big pinch of salt. You know, listen to other people's opinions, but don't take anybody's word as the truth or as an absolute, you know. Years ago, when I was just kind of getting back into photography again, I attended a workshop with a couple of very prominent photographers. Um, and I started to pursue this series that they weren't that keen on. And at the end of it, this whole kind of uh, week-long workshop, we had an exhibition and we had to choose what we wanted to show. Um, and I was told very strongly by these two very prominent photographers not to show this particular work. Uh, but just something in me thought, no, this is, you know, there's something very strong here. Um, so I went ahead and kind of, you know, defied their direction and picked this series to go with. Uh, and it, it worked out really well um, in the end, like even they agreed that I went the right way. And another thing is don't, I think, be so obsessed with earning a living from photography because I think it can give you a degree of freedom to, to earn a living through other means and pursue it in your own time, uh, which is what I've done for a good number of years. Um, yeah, and it doesn't kind of, I think working in, in one particular field or another, photography-wise can kind of maybe clutter your visual aesthetic. And if you kind of have this freedom to be away from photography, working a regular job, I think that can be a great benefit. This project, uh, vote number one, that I'm showing here today was an interesting one because it happened quite accidentally. Um, I was home visiting family, went to visit my granny and saw this, this election car parked outside of her house with the face kind of printed across the door in the window, like cut in two. And I took a photo and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, a few kind of minutes later, I saw an election poster with a plastic tie through the throat and kind of thought this, this could make a great little project. And I was only home for a couple of days, but kind of scrambled around to try and get as many pictures as possible. Uh, by the end of it though, I only had maybe a handful, you know, heading back to the airport had maybe a dozen or so good pictures, but I really thought this was like the makings of a good book. Uh, I got back to London and thought, you know, damn, that would have been a great book. I'll, I'll wait till the next election and head back. And then I kind of sat there looking at the pictures thinking it's such a straightforward idea that someone else is bound to think of it. Uh, and so I thought if I don't do it now, someone else will. Uh, so I ended up booking a flight for the next kind of weekend and headed back and uh, started the project. My next challenge is to actually start taking pictures again, because with this project, I photographed it in 2014, spent the following year trying to produce a book. So making dozens of dummy books, uh, trying to perfect it and trying to get it published. Uh, eventually I did get it published. I was very lucky to get the whole thing funded through the Vienna Photo Book Festival. But since then, the whole thing has been about promoting the book. And so uh, just haven't really had time to uh, take my own pictures. So that's the biggest challenge is to actually get back into that kind of full time again. I, I'm, I'm working on something at the moment. Yeah, I had a very awkward run-in though. I, I went to an opening at the Photographer's Gallery in London and I was introduced by a curator to this other photographer. And we didn't really have much to speak about, but I had met this guy before um, and I was aware of his work. He brought out a couple of very lovely books. And so there's a bit of a lull in the conversation. And so I said to him, so, you know, what are you, what are you working on at the moment? And he starts describing his current project to me. And I, I started to panic and I said, whoa, whoa, I have to stop you there because I'm working on like basically an identical project, you know, by the way you describe it. It was very uncomfortable. So we both kind of stood there for a minute and just kind of said, okay, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, very uncomfortable. But uh, so that project that he mentioned is very close to the one I'm working on now. I think probably I don't really, I don't know. I would kind of say that, do I doubt my uniqueness as a photographer? I'm not sure. Irish people are, aren't great self-promoters and are quite kind of self-doubting in nature, I think, quite self-deprecating. I think it's kind of, I think when people kind of tell you you can't do something, I think that's the greatest motivation of all. 
Like it's all well and good when someone's saying, oh, you're doing very well, you know, you've got a great eye for photography. That's lovely, but it doesn't really spur me on. But when someone tells me I'm terrible, I feel like, you know, screw you. Like I'll, I'll show you I'm not. I, I told you when I started out in photography was this during the school year, this transition year. At the end of the year, the head of our course said I was the worst photographer he had ever seen. And uh, yeah, that was great motivation. Yeah. <laughs>